Hi and welcome to Bex Media's video review of the Blackmagic Video Assist 4K. So in this review we're going to look at a few things with the new video for Assist 4K. We're going to look at some of the uh, ports and what the I.O. is on the unit. Um, we're going to go through some things that we really like about it, we're going to go through some things that we don't like about it. Um, we're going to go on a firmware wish list mission, because obviously when Blackmagic releasing, sometimes it needs a little bit more of a firmware adjustment, which we've all seen. Uh, so we're going to go and tell them what we really want to see at the next update. We're going to talk about some of the camera compatibility issues between both the Blackmagic range and some of the other cameras that are out there on the market. We're going to go through the great new audio engine within the unit. Uh, but we've got an interesting little point to mention on this and also all the audio you hear on this video will be recorded using the Blackmagic Video Assist. We're going to shoot in a number of different scenarios, hopefully to represent some of the things that you might be able to use this unit for, how we might use the unit as well, so we're going to mount it up on a Ronin, uh, see how heavy it is, how much weight it adds to the system, and we're going to uh, use it on tripods, we can use it in all sorts of different ways, and hopefully that will uh, be useful to see how we use it in a real world situation for someone like you guys. Some of the footage you see in this video won't be shot on the Video Assist 4K, that's because we have a whole heap of different cameras that we're going to be using on this shoot and we've only got one video assist 4k. When that happens and you see some footage that isn't shot using that, we'll put a little label on it so you know what you're looking at. Now although this isn't strictly an unboxing video, because we did that yesterday because we were too excited, we should probably still go through some of it. Um, so within our nice little box you can see where the video assist would sit and underneath that there's where the power charger would go um, and they've got our different plugs for different regions. Uh, the annoying thing about this is uh, once you've fitted the plug, the right plug to the power supply, you can't get it back in the box without taking it back off and it's really annoying. So uh, that's always something, I mean that's a minor point, but it's worth mentioning that we can't, you can't actually put it back in the box, close the lid with everything on there. Uh, so that'd be nice to see if change in that. Um, the, as, as with all other Blackmagic pro uh, products, uh, the physical documentation you get with it is pretty minimal. Uh, we've got our little welcome book here. Um, and. Uh, Inside that welcome book, we've just got a little welcome from Grant at uh, Blackmagic Video. Um, now, also we've got two SD cards. Um, we have got the manual for it right there. And we've got DaVinci Resolve. Now we are really excited. There we go, messing up, there you go. DaVinci Resolve there. Um, we were really excited when we opened this, we thought, oh, is this the full DaVinci Resolve because it's 4K, are we going to get everything or is it going to be the light version? It's the light version, it doesn't have the noise reduction filtering that we were looking for, uh, so it looks like you still have to buy, um, buy that um, or buy uh, one of the uh, more expensive cameras from Blackmagic to get that, uh, which is a shame, but hey-ho, we did only pay £645 for this. So now we're going to go through some of the ports on the unit. Uh, now it is all plugged in because we are recording to that camera at the moment. Uh, so some of them might be a bit hard to see, but we'll try and go through them as best as possible. Uh, on this side, you can see we have the HDMIs. We've got an in and an out. Uh, so that's good, so you've got pass through. Same with SDI. And then you've got our professional audio, uh, professional audio connections, which are mini XLRs. This is the point I wanted to mention, mini XLRs. Uh, in the UK market, we found that it's extremely hard to get hold of them. In fact, uh, when we sourced this from CVP, uh, it came through and we realised there were no converters in the box. We phoned up CVP, they were very, very nice and tried to help us, but they didn't have it in stock. So they're now looking at uh, producing these cables themselves and selling them as a package deal with the Video Assist 4K, which I think is a really, really good idea, but a slight short-sightedness on the part of Blackmagic not seeing that that could be an issue in the UK market and especially if you guys get this and then need to do work straight away that's going to put a real real pressure on you. So the way we managed to sort that out is uh, one of our technicians Tom, who's the guy behind that camera, um, sourced uh, a plug um, and we got it delivered next day thankfully so we're able to do it. There we are down there. We're able to do it, and let's get that the right way around, uh, for this video. So that's a standard mini mail jack, uh, and then we just soldered that together. Uh, oh, actually, we've even got a, uh, 
a full finished cable here, you can see up there, we've got XLRs there. On the bottom, uh, you might see that we have a kickstand, um, this little kickstand here, which is something that we saw at uh, NAB, that was one of the things they focused on. And um, it's, it's nice, it does its job, it does keep itself stood up, so I can leave that there, you know, cable's plugged in, it is, it is stood up, it's okay. Um, however, um, it, the first time I picked it up and pinged it out, it actually sort of came adrift and you can see I've just taken that right off there. And um, so, yeah, it, it, it works whether it will sub uh, stand up to full field use, yet to see. So also on the bottom of the unit, we have uh, these three mount holes which are standard tripod holes, which are great for mounting all sorts of, uh, all sorts of equipment. Uh, so whether you can put this on something or put something on it, so you can daisy chain as many things as up as you want. Uh, not too many though, I hope. Uh, and uh, same thing is on the top side as well. So let me just flip this over and we'll go to the top side next. On the top we have the same three mount points as you uh, mirror from the bottom. Uh, and also you have these uh, little push-ins which are for the battery uh, ejects. Um, on, on the final final side that we've not seen yet, apart from the back, uh, is a uh, series, well, a couple of uh, camera SD slots, uh, and you've got a LANC port here, uh, and uh, our headphone port, which is currently being used, because we're using this to uh, film with, um, and finally our power port as well. And that's about it for the sides of it. On the back, uh, you can see we've got, We've got our uh, two battery ports. Uh, in the middle, this is a point, a real uh, important point to mention, is uh, we've got a fan port. Now, at the moment, if I'm super quiet, you can't really hear it. However, if I bring this closer to the microphone, yeah. can you hear that? Yeah. So if it's super close to something, you do want to be a bit careful, and that's something that's um, a bit different from some of the competitors, is uh, we've got an active fan in there, which is obviously keeping everything nice and cool, uh, but it'd be better if it was completely passively cooled. Oh, the final thing is obviously our screen itself, um, which, uh, as you can see, is a, is a very, very nice screen. Uh, it's a full HD screen, but it's not, it's a, not only that, but it's a little bit more than HD, because it's got a little bit more um, room top and bottom. So if I take away our, um, our guide at the bottom, um, you can see that if I pull it up like that, you can see the guide at the bottom. That, that does crop the bottom of the image. Swipe that away, the image that you're left with on screen is a full 1080p image on the screen. That's a full 1080p resolution. Uh, and the top part for timecode and other monitoring is, uh, is actually additional resolution, so it's not actually cropping, cropping in, which is really, really great. Now, this is always a nice thing to do, let's just whip that off, lovely. So going through some of the on-screen functions of the Blackmagic Video Assist 4K, um, we've got a, a good few options here, and I'm just going to go through a couple. So we're, we're recording at the moment, um, as you can see if I swipe up we get our histogram here, um, and we get our, whether we're recording or not, we also get our audio meters. Those audio meters are really, really good, they're very easy to see, um, very easy to use. Um, and then if I then swipe, this is one thing which is worth noting actually is the, uh, the gestures that you need to use are not necessarily the most intuitive. It took us a while to realise swiping up, down, left, right did things and did things in different menus. However, however if I swipe, there we are, we are currently on storage. So you see we're at the storage tab here and if I go to uh, display, you can see we're looking at so display, you've got brightness, contrast and saturation. Um, again, we might come to a wish list point on what we might like to see as further options for how we might display the image that we're getting in. Um, we've got zebras, we've got focus peaking, so we've got zebra guides there which we can alter up and down as we need to. You can see we've got some zebras going on there. Uh, we've got focus peaking so we can get our nice focus um, from there, whether or not that camera's focused or not, let's hope it is. Um, and we have got our guides and we can add different guides on here. Now these are set guides, uh, whether, we, whether you'd like to do any more or not, you can't at the moment, that'd be nice to see in the future. Um, and finally we can have a 3x3 three three grid. 
and we're going to swipe again, get back in. Oh, actually, see that. See what I mean? This is a, not exactly the most intuitive audio. Here we go. Uh, some audio, as you can see at the moment, we've got. We're running on an XLR uh, channel one. Um, we've got phantom power on XLR as well, but you can change all these things around as well if you need to. Oh, again. There we go. Back again. So that's uh, dealt with the bottom part of the screen. Uh, the histogram is uh, the histogram is really nice, but again, we might like to see a little bit of a upgrade to what we might be able to monitor uh, our exposure with, and also our colours. Um, uh, our battery level indicator, currently there's no batteries in this unit, so we're not seeing any batteries there. However, apparently it gives a very, very nice uh, overview of well, your battery levels within them, and we'll also try that out when we go out in the field with this later on. And you can see our card length. Now this is interesting because when we, when we stuck these cards in it said it was 60 hours and then as soon as you start recording as you can see we now have three minutes left so I've got to hurry up um, and, and it tells you the X fact. You can also format the cards as well. Uh, we had some interesting things about being able to format the cards in camera. Sometimes we could, sometimes we couldn't. It's recommended that you format the card in your computer as XFAT first, which if you get a card out in the field, if you need to run to the shop and get a card, that could leave you in a bit of a bind. So be really, really wary of that when you are picking up cards for a shoot. You need, well, it would be my recommendation that you need to have those cards formatted before you stick it in the video assist. We've got the ability to zoom in on the image to check our focus. Uh, now that is done by clicking in, oh goodness me, in this point up here. So you can see I've just cropped in. Now it is a, it is a center crop only. We can't navigate around the image. Um, so that would be a nice thing to see. And one final point to mention on the audio is uh, if you just tap the audio meter, you can then change, as this is showing you, changing the input level uh, like that, uh, hopefully leaving it back where I saw, along with the headphone level, so I don't want to deafen Tom too much, but I could go really loud, sorry Tom, um, and uh, further down. Mike needs to go down. Mike needs to go down as well. There we go. I'm not even monitoring, so I don't know what I'm doing here. Um, but uh, yes, yeah, so that's that's a that's a, a good uh, good audio uh, level meter. And by looks things, the, the preamps in this are, are really really great. Um, and that's about it for the the, the functions on the screen. Uh, now we're going to go and take it out in the field, have a play with it, and maybe come up with some real negatives and real positives about this piece of equipment, along with our final wish list.
So we've just come back from our test of the new Blackmagic Video Assist 4K and overall we were really impressed with how it performed in the field. Uh, there are a few points that we really liked about it and there are a few that we thought they could do a little bit better on. So let's go. So first off let's talk about the battery life that we experienced. The batteries performed pretty well for the size of battery they are. Uh, the Canon LPE6 batteries and we have ours rated at 2600 milliamp hours. Um, now per battery we were getting around about about 45 minutes of, uh, of life out of them, uh, so about around about an hour and a half for a double set and it obviously drains one than the other. Um, and that wasn't bad, um, obviously it would be nicer if they supplied it with possibly something other than a Canon battery, either an option to put on a, an L series perhaps, uh, to give us a little bit more duration. Uh, but generally it was pretty pretty good. So in direct sunlight, the Blackmagic Video Assist 4K provided a really, really great image. Um, when we were using it in all sorts of different situations, it was very easy to see. Uh, we could see uh, all the different parts and definitions of the image, uh, and it was quite good to help with uh, judging exposure as well, especially with those zebras at different levels. We shot everything today using the ProRes LT codec and it provided an excellent quality even at the LT version. Uh, the bitrate of the LT was 344 megabits uh, and the 4K footage at the end of it looks stunning. We're actually going to provide you our sample footage on some links in the description down below so please check that out. One thing we really liked about the unit was its size. It was a perfect size complement to all the different types of equipment that we filmed today. And actually, the Ronin held it really nicely. It didn't tire my arms out too much. I was able to walk a good couple of hundred meters before I needed to put it down. Having that rubberized back made it feel really secure when we were moving the screen around. When we were moving it around and adjusting it for different angles, it just felt solid in our hands, which is a big, big, big plus because nobody likes dropping things like this. One of the features that we've seen on one of our other recorders, the Odyssey 7Q, is the auto flip function. And we were really, really happy that Blackmagic had integrated that into their design as well. It was very, very responsive. It worked when the monitor was flipped. We didn't have any issues of it being flat and flipping, which sometimes some monitors have done that. Uh, it was really, really useful um, and uh, very, very useful when we were flipping the monitor up and down uh, on the tripod arm. So the only camera we were able to test the Blackmagic Video Assist 4K with this today was our Sony A7S and that recorded beautifully out of its HDMI as 4K. We originally wanted it to record using this camera that you're looking at now which is our Sony FS700 but that only outputs a raw SDI signal so that was unable to be captured. Uh, so we still have to use our Odyssey 7Q to, to acquire that signal in 4K. Every now and again we found something slightly concerning about the Blackmagic Video Assist 4K. A black flash would happen for a couple of frames whilst we were monitoring and recording. And it didn't seem to affect the actual acquisition of the footage, uh, but it's still slightly odd and certainly we wouldn't like to see that happening with the next firmware update. One of the points that you see on professional audio inside cameras is the ability to switch your channel, your monitoring and your headphones. That currently isn't in the monitor, but that would be a great feature. Although we found very little wrong with the Blackmagic Video Assist 4K, we do have a few wishes for the next versions of the firmware. Please give them to us. Firstly, guide customization. It would be really, really nice to be able to set custom guides uh, by possibly being able to scrub guides in up and down using your finger. That should be something you guys should be able to do. Looking forward to that one. We would really like to see if you can integrate LUTs. We've seen Blackmagic uh, integrate LUTs to other parts of its products and being able to uh, assign a LUT to uh, a camera, we found that really useful with some of the other monitors out on the market. Going on from there, we'd like the ability to be able to pan with the zoom, move that cropped zoom box around our image. Uh, doing that would allow us to be able to focus on different parts of the image, not just that center portion. Our final wish is about additional monitoring tools. We'd like to have additionals for the waveform, some vector scopes, and maybe even false color, and also the ability to push all of that to a much larger portion of the screen, not just at the bottom left, which the histogram currently sits in. So having the histogram and all of those in a much larger frame would be really, really useful. In summary, we think this piece of equipment is going to become a vital tool in our armory. Although it might not match up to some of the much higher standards of video monitoring and recording, it's a much lower price point, so you can't compare them. We really like it, we're going to use it, perhaps you should get one too.